Hi guys. Okay, I'm getting ready to warp the loom and I have two camera angles set up so you might see this from different sides throughout. We'll see how that works. You also might see me crouch around this particular camera because it's really close to the table. Uh, we'll see what happens in editing. You know, it is what it is. All right, so Things that you don't have not seen before is this piece here, which is called the rattle. That's R-A-D, as in David, D as in David, L-E. Not rattle, as in a children's, you know, a baby rattle. Um, it is used to space the warp uh, at the back. And you can use it at the front. It's used to space the warp so that as it goes on to the back beam, it is the right distance, you know, across. And this is my warp. These look very familiar. These are the lease sticks. That's L-E-A-S-E. -E. You will hear some people refer to them as leash sticks. Um, it's very confusing, but the technical term is leaf sticks, and they're designed to keep my cross in place so that I don't lose my orderliness of my, my warp. And these are a lovely item that came with the loom. They're called the helping hands, and you'll see as we go along why they're called that. But they are currently tied from the back of the loom all the way to the front of the loom. Now, before I move on, I'd like to say that I beam from the back to the front. You can beam from the front to the back. When we're all done, I'll explain why I don't like the um, front to back method. And you'll kind of get a hint of it as I go along, but we'll work through that. Um, our little rings, these are um, sold at office supply stores as... Um, binder rings. So these are designed to keep the leaf sticks from falling apart and having the warp come off as you're working. So let's lay those on the helping hands so that you can see them. This is my warp. It's a pretty short warp. And um, those of you who watched me warp it may have heard me see, say, oops, I forgot to tie the other end. Uh, so when I get to the other end, I'll have some work to do. I'm just going to set it there for the moment. These ties here keep the cross in order. Okay, The cross is really important for keeping your threads in an orderly fashion so that as you warp the loom, they don't get crisscrossed because the crisscross in the warp means that you end up with a, a spot where they catch, which can be really difficult to work with. There are ways around it if you accidentally do get a crisscross, but it's much easier not to have it in the first place. So what's gonna happen, I'm gonna place these leaf sticks through the warp I'm going to place the, the leaf sticks in the helping hands by creating a cross. So one is going to go under the first one over the second. The other is going to go over the first one under the second. And as you will hear weavers say time and time again, safety first. I'm going to take my ring. I think I'm out of camera view here. I'm going to take my ring and I'm going to put it between these two leaf sticks. Got it too far open, it doesn't want to go through. So I'm going to put it through the first one, put it through the second one, lock it together. Okay, this one is stiff because it's new and it's not wanting to lock. It's wanting to crisscross wrong. There we go, nice and locked. Then I'm going to come over here, I'm going to do the same thing on this side, over under one, it's hitting the bar over there. Move it forward just a little bit. Under one, over the other. Under the back one, over the front. 
Okay, now my helping hands are in place to keep those from moving or moving a lot. And I will lock the second end together. Locked. Okay, now I know that no matter what I do, my warp is not going to come off these sticks. These are going to keep my warp totally secure. So now, one last thing before I un... Well, no, I'm not going to, going to have to go ahead and untie it because it's really close to the end. All right, so now I can untie these, which I've just kind of hooked them over, but it, it is sticky wool, so I'm going to have to take a second here. I've tied these nice and tight. You want, you want to make sure it's very secure when you do these cross ties because you do not want to lose that cross. A weaver's worst nightmare is losing the cross. I'm going to slip that on here for just a second. So I can see better. Of course, my eyesight's part of the problem here. Which end is going where? I could cut it, but I'd rather not. I, I don't like cutting anywhere near my cross. Again, you don't want to accidentally cut your warp. There we go. Now I got it. All right. One. This one's going to be harder because it's upside down. I just learned something not to use this sticky wool for my cross ties. There we go. There's three, one more to go. is now out and I forgot to unknot it. Let's see, what can I do to fix this problem? Okay, so I'm putting the leaf sticks back through the cross. Okay, I've retied them. I'm going to put them back in the healthy hands. And I'm going to put the ring back on the end of the leaf sticks so that they're secure. Basically what happened when I did my chain, I pulled it through that last one to keep them from falling apart. Yeah, that ended up causing me a problem. Okay. noise is going to drive me crazy. There we go. No, 
knowing it was going to be a matter of seconds. So I didn't worry about tying them quite as tight as the last time. But I did tie it in all four places just to be on the safe side. Okay, now I have my warp chained, okay? I'm just gonna lay it across the front for now because I'm gonna have to pull it out just a little bit at a time. And what I need to do now is pull this cross further forward. it for some reason. That's the loop at the end. Okay, I'm going to have to take that loop. What I'm going to do is just can't snip it. That's the loop where my chain started and I've caught it on my lee stick. So again, I need to make a minor adjustment here. These are the things that we deal with as weavers. There, now it'll move forward. Okay, I needed it to move forward far enough that what I can do is place it on this bar. Now, my warp is 12 and a half inches on the loom. That's probably, what, about four inches? Let's take a tape measure and find out. Far apart on my strings. And yes, weaving tends to, to work in inches rather than. Okay, that's about six inches. So that leaves. Another so about three inches on either side of the the loops. So I am going to have to take it all the way back to this loop. A little bit of spacing issue there. Lift up my work. I'm going to start. See those two, where are those two coming from, first or last? Those are coming from that end, so they'll go on last. I'm gonna take just a few. Set that down. Just the last few because it's really not that big of a warp. Put it through. Just kind of sort of trying to get it spaced a little bit. That'll tighten up as we go. And get those last few 
including this loop here, which was my starting loop. Make sure we get that on in the right direction here so that it doesn't twist too much. As you can see, I've replaced those strings with this Texolve. I mentioned that the other day. All right, now, just to make sure these are secure, I've attached a band -aid, uh, rubber band, a band -aid, to this end. I'm just gonna wrap it around this end a couple of times. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be secure enough that it won't slide out, so to speak. And of course, when I get more Texolve, I'll, I'll add strings to the ends as well because they will help keep it even. Okay, now I can pull that back over here. All right, now I'm ready to start spreading this, my 12 and a half inches, okay? These are half inch measurements, so I'm going to have six and a quarter inches on either side. So I will, there's a little pinhole here marking the center one. So I'm going to go out one, two, three, four, five, Six, that seems too wide. That seems way too wide for this many. And pulling from my cross, I now have two strands on either side. And I will start there. Sometimes I'll mark it beforehand with a rubber band, but this time I figured it wasn't that wide of a warp. It wasn't necessary. So going back to my pattern, this is the part I didn't look at. My final number of ends was 124. Yes, 124 ends. That means I have 124 threads this way. If I divide that and haha, <laughs> both my phone and my tablet are now working. So 124 divided by 12 is going to be 10.4. So I'm gonna put two in the end and I'm going to put well, I can't put five in each because you can't split it up and I've got this wound in twos. So what I'll have to do is six, four, six, four, all the way across. I'll probably at the center switch to four, six and I should have two at the end. So that's what we'll do. All right, so coming down to my cross, Two, four, six ends. So I'm pulling these at the cross so that I can see which ones are next, right? That helps keep all of these nice and flat as we once we get there. This this cotton is interesting. It's it's a mercerized cotton. It's very slippery. So it kind of looks tangly at the moment. It won't in the end. Six.
Okay. Yeah, I, I did my math a little wrong somewhere and it may have been because I switched, but everything is now evenly spaced. Let's just check something. We're evenly spaced all the way across. So we're good. Everything is good there. Now those are hanging, that's fine. Now I have to walk in front of you, so I'm gonna pause you for just a second. 